So here we are a couple days before Tisha B'Av, at the end of the three weeks, at the end of the nine days. And this difficult time which leads towards Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, a day that we fast and commemorate the destruction, not just of one temple, but both temples. A difficult day, so many bad and hard things happened to the Jewish people on that day. The interesting thing is that a lot of the sources also point to the fact that it's a day where a lot of good will one day come out of it. It is the day that supposedly the Messiah will be born. It is his birthday, meaning on the day of the utmost destruction, the soul of the one that will one day redeem us. Redemption is already in the air, together with destruction. Sometimes it's a bit hard to comprehend both of these things together. But I want us, as we look at understandings about what it means, the destruction of the temple, I want to, um, to speak a little bit about the sources as it appears in the Zohar. The Zohar Chadash on Eicha describe a very interesting thing. The whole story of the destruction is told through a very, I would say, unique imagery. The imagery there isn't a collective one of the temple being burnt um, and of the loss that a nation goes through, but through a very specific loss. The image there is of a child walking around amongst the ruined walls of what once used to be his home, searching for his mother, seeing the place where she used to walk, the place where she used to hold them, the place where she used to take care of them, looking, lamenting, and trying to find his mother. Another place in the Zohar, the, the description is of a woman who is looking amongst the ruined shards of her destroyed house, saying, Ah, oh, the altar, that's where we used to sit and eat. Oh, Kodesh HaKodeshim, the Holy of Holies, where the Kruvim were. That's where we used to lay. That was our bedroom. Almost like the most personal account of a woman who is saddened to the fact that as she walks around a destroyed home of what used to be her home. In a way, the Zohar takes it away from the collective idea of the loss of the temple in Jerusalem, which sometimes is something which is a bit hard to connect to, and says, loss is loss. And the most personal loss in the world is the loss of a home. In Hebrew, we say, Chuban Habayit. And Chubanabait literally means the destruction of the temple, but it also means the destruction of the home. This week was the yard site, the passing of one of the greatest mystics of our, gen of, of our, of our past generations, the Ari, Rabbi Isaac Luria, who lived in Tzfat. And the Ari, he passed away on the fifth day of Av. You know, they say that the Ari, he told secrets he wasn't supposed to tell, and he told his student, because I told what I wasn't supposed to, I'm going to have to pass away from this world. And the student said, please, Master, there must be something that we can do. And he thought, and he said, if all of us, our whole group, that learn together, we need to live together in a compound, and we need to get along, and we need to not fight. As long as we don't fight, I will still remain with you. And they moved in together in one of those courtyards that you see in Svat, and they lived together. But one Friday, as Friday, there's a lot of tension around the house, the wife started fighting, and then the husband started fighting. And as they walked dressed in white to have their Kabbalah Shabbat, the Ari, his face looked angry, and he was upset. And they said, what is it? And he said, I see the angel of death walk amongst us. And that week, he passed away. He passed away in Hey Av, which is the letters spell out the word love, Ahav. Because the Ari, one of the deepest teachings that he taught us is that the way to overcome death and the way to overcome destruction is through recreating love and respect between the different people who are living together as a community and within each family. You know, and I think this is one of the messages that he left us, um, that he passed away right before Tisha B'Av. Another one of his teachings, if we go back to what we spoke at the beginning, is that when God created the world, there was a lot of light that came down but the vessels weren't big enough to hold the light. So there was a shattering of vessels. And that's why the world is broken. But that brokenness came from a place of a great light coming down. If we go back to what we spoke at the beginning, how could it be that the day of the utmost loss and difficulty is the day of the utmost potential and beauty and redemption, that the Messiah is born? This is what the Avi is teaching. You know, when we love somebody very much, we tend to get pretty disappointed too. The first thing that happened on Tisha B'Av was the people of Israel were supposed to go into the land, but the spies, they came back and they spoke horribly about the land. And instead of going into the land on Tisha B'Av, what was decreed is that we would die in the desert. That was the day that was supposed to be the happiest day, the day of our Aliyah as a nation. And instead it became a difficult day because when you believe in something very much, 
when you love somebody very much, then losing them is even all the more so, more and more difficult. So within the day of Tisha B'Av, we have infused the greatest love and sometimes the greatest pain too. Which can explain also when the Babylonians took out the Kruvim in the destruction, that the Gemara says that they were face to face. We know that they're face to face just when we're deeply connected to God. And says the Nativot Shalom, the Slonim Arebi, that in the place of destruction, that's the place that we're deeply, deeply connected. Sometimes we feel connected, not just through the good things we go through, but also through the difficult ones. And one day Tisha B'Av will be a day, a holiday, a joyous day. And Reb Tzadok says, you know, we have a holiday coming up in a week, which is Tu B'Av, which is the holiday of love. And one day Tisha B'Av will be Yom Tov Rishon, the first holiday. Tu B'Av will be Yom Tov Sheni. And we'll have seven days of Cholam Moed, right like the other holidays. And that's the connection, because Tisha B'Av isn't just about the destruction of the temple, but it's about the loss of our love, and it's about the loss of our home. And in that, the Ari has taught us that what we need to do in these days, don't yell at your children. Don't, don't get into a fight with your spouse or with your loved ones. Make up with all the people that we may have wronged, because keeping our family and our homes whole and beautiful, that is what we need to do in order to bring a fixing of the building of the temple. And that is Mamash Redemption. Shabbat Shalom.